<laughs> I thought it was very confusing. Uh, you know, you, they started off and they ran side by side and side by side and side. The only thing that separated them, they had a pit stop, and then they got separated, and then they all got back together. And, uh, you know, it was just one of those deals where if he's in the right lane, you could lead the race. If he wasn't, you couldn't. And uh, they got no horsepower on these cars, so even when they by themselves, they'd struggle just to keep up. So uh, it, ma it makes it really hard on the drivers to try to manipulate around and, you know, a lot of times it's not what you do, it's what the guy beside of you does. And uh, so then you have to make a, a arrangements from there. Yeah, we, you know, we talked, uh, I was talking, you know, people asked me what you're expecting tomorrow. I said, well, there's probably 30 people that can win the race mm -hmm. and they don't understand that. And it wasn't like that back in the day, but it was probably a typical Daytona, Daytona. recent year mm -hmm. race. And, uh, and the, talking to the different crew chiefs and the drivers, of course, and everything, but survival was the biggest part of it, and uh, that it it certainly was what yeah. everybody expected, I guess. So, but you know, the race, we can talk about the race, Richard, but we've we've seen the grandstands full before at Daytona, but we've never seen that many people in the garage and in the no, pits they, and they and, people and the pre-race show, yeah. but, and. Uh, you know, the race was a typical race. They just run, run, run. They have a wreck. Then everything repositions. And, you know, <clears throat> right at the very last of the race, you had people that was running in the back or up front because some of the good cars had gotten knocked out. So uh, they was just really, uh, when the race was over, they were just three or four of the cars that run good all day that finished in the top ten. And, uh, you know, we was talking about that one boy that ran – Tenth, he spun out three different times, and you know he wasn't up there racing with the with the leaders. But when everybody fell out, even in spinning out and stuff, he never got the car tore up, so he was able to at least keep up. And uh, that, that that just happens. It happens every time we run into a, a race like that. So the big deal is if you just go, no matter how your car is, if you run long enough and stay out of trouble, you're gonna have a pretty good finish. But the speeds were incredibly fast from what they qualified and everything. When they, and at one time, the, our 42 car got separated and he got hung up with the 21 car. And uh, they were running nose to tail, but there's, what, two seconds two off? Two seconds slow. Yeah. And it, it, it takes more than two cars to run fast in the draft. And I don't know what the actual number is. It might be five, six, seven, eight, but I know when there's 30 in a pack, they're, <laughs> they're hauling buggy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but uh, one of the big highlights of the day was the Thunderbird show before the race. I mean, that was unreal. And I was lucky enough to see when they practiced on Saturday and what a great show the Air Force put on. The Chevrolet's was hanging on, basically, even though they wound up winning the race. Uh, the Ford's was probably the, the better car. And, but there was always a Chevrolet up in there. One time I looked up and the first six cars was Fords. But then you wait a couple of laps and then the first thing you know, there's a Talladega, Toyota up in there and a couple of Chevrolets. So you, you never know. You just run, run, run. And just when it's all over, you take what, what they give you. And that's the way it wound up. I think all three of our cars, 84, the uh, 42 and the 43 were just as competitive as any of them. If you had to pick a, pick a better manufacturer, like Richard said, it was probably Ford. But there again, it was representative Chevrolet, Ford, and Toyota in the first three. So the thing about this type racing, you better not blink your eyes because you'll miss something and you can't, <laughs> you can't, uh, you can't predict who's going to win it till they get to the checkered flag. But, uh, we even years ago, Richard was involved in some of these races because I know in 1979 uh, we was running third, took the white flag, running third, 17 seconds back, and wound up winning the race when uh, Cale and Donnie and Bobby put on a boxing match, and so that gave us a win. And uh, and we've come to the checkered flag with Pearson and not get there before he did, and it's just. Um, it's just Daytona, and we're repeating ourselves, but it's a typical Daytona. You think you got enough? We got enough.
Yeah, yeah he, home, he, get a, back and we'll snag a picture real quick. Yeah, he can cut up. Can you get up? You may help you. <laughs> he gonna be, I'm going to knock him. <laughs> I, I pull on his hair, but he ain't got none. <laughs> perfect. That can be our little preview. Don't, yeah. don't ever say perfect. Say good. Good.